Death Valley Days. Now, 20 Mule Team products bring you Death Valley Days. During America's westward migration, about every form of conveyance known to man was pressed into service by the emigrants. There were Conestoga wagons, stagecoaches, buggies, and surreys. One hardy soul even started from independence on a bicycle. But the most unlikely vehicle of all was the one we bring you tonight in the story of the dry water sailors. <laughs> Now you move. Not even to hold up a flag of truce, Jason? It's all right, Sarah. It's Charlie Pankhurst. I wondered how long before somebody came back to see who was holding us up. You'd think you'd keep in closer touch what with Sarah's condition. Her time hasn't come yet, has it? No. Not for a while yet, Charlie, but I thank you for asking. No, I, I just sat down to eat and felt a little dizzy. I guess having a baby after you're 40 isn't as easy as I thought it'd be. <laughs> it's going to be all right. We'll be in California long before then. You're not going to have any trouble at all. Not if you stay up with a wagon train, but if you keep falling behind. What do you mean? All right, Jason. This is the third time in a week that you've gotten stuck. I'm sorry, Mrs. Howard. Captain Morrow sent me back here to tell you if Jason couldn't keep up with a wagon train, he was going to move on without you. Oh, Charlie, he wouldn't. Of course not. You and your condition and the country full of thieving Indians. What kind of a wagon master would that be? There's not going to be any problem uh, keeping up with the train once I get dug out. I have to unload, though, lighten the load a bit. Want to lend a hand? Whenever you're ready, Jason. That about does it. You better go up and get some rest, huh? You've been out in the sun too long as it is. Oh, me, fiddlestick. I'm hardy as a cow buffalo. <laughs> well, here comes Captain Morrow. Hair must look a fright. Well, that's a woman for you, huh? What are these looking so black about? I could make a guess. Howdy, Captain. Why a spell? Haven't the time. I've been holding the wagons, mister. Sorry. The job took longer than I expected. I didn't send you out here to work, Charlie. I ask you to find the Howards, deliver a message, and ride back. Right. You asked me as a favor. It was not an order because I paid my fare with the Missouri party just like everyone else, meaning I'm not your messenger boy. As for working, if you'd have told me not to help Jason Howard, I'd have told you where to go. I don't cotton to mutineers, Mr. Pancoast. I don't cotton to tyrants, Captain Morrow. Maybe I had that coming. Don't let it go to your head. You expect to get this contraption out of here this way? Well, what makes you think I can't? Face up to it, man. This contraption's so heavy, it'll sink into any ground that isn't rock hard. Or would you like for me to pave a road for you to California an inch at a time? Well, I 
kept up with a train all the way from Independence to Santa Fe. That trail was rock hard. Now we've got long stretches of softer stuff. And from the Pima villages to the Colorado River, it's even softer and sandier. Ask Pancoast there. He's been over it before. He's right, Jason. Uh, I expect you to agree with him, you being sweet on his daughter and all. It's a crazy contraption, is it, huh? Well, you stand back. Come on. All right. Go ahead and say it. You told me so. Well, believe me, there's a way out of this, and I'm going to find it. That's up to you, but don't expect me to hold up the train. Well, Captain Morrow, you wouldn't strand us out here on this... this wilderness. I don't want to, Mrs. Howard. Pancoast there's traveling light. You and your husband could ride with him. And I'll see that at least part of your belongings ride in some of the other wagons. And that means leaving the defiant behind? Is that what you're trying to tell me? That's exactly what I'm telling you, Mr. Howard. Well, you can save your breath because I'm not listening. I put five years of my life into building the Defiant. And every skill I ever learned as a wagon maker and a shipbuilder in Wisconsin is in every peg and every bolt and every rivet. Now, I felled the trees and cured the timber. And I dressed out every plank and every rib. And I finished them and planed them and shaped them just the way a man shapes a dream. And Sarah's standing by every step of the way. I don't think you're gonna make me walk away from something that represents my whole future. And Sarah's, and the child's. Yes, as long as that future can't keep up with the train. Now, I've already proved to you that she's too heavy for this kind of country, even when she's unloaded. Now, I'm not gonna have her holding back the rest of the wagons. You and I both know that the hot part of the summer is about on us. If it catches us in the desert, we're in big trouble. Here on in, we're racing against the weather like you'd race against a bomb with a fuse lit. And I intend to be up in cool country with the train before that bomb goes off. Well, maybe he's right, Jason. Maybe we'll have to give up our dream. Never. You may want the Defiant before it's over. I doubt that very much. Wait a minute, Captain. There must be a way to iron this thing out. If we just stop and think. I've thought about it so much, I've gone without sleep. Anyway, we've already made one stop too many. You coming? I'll be along. Have you seen Charlie Pancoast? Just rode in a few minutes ago. He's in his wagon. Charlie! Annette, what is it? What's the matter? Charlie, it's Papa. Something I never saw him do in all the years he's been a wagon master. He held a meeting with the group leaders about the Howards and called for a vote. And? The train's going to pull out and leave them stuck. Well, he can't do it. He just can't do it. I can and I will. And before you start yapping at me, mister, you'd better think about the articles everybody signed at Council Grove. Any member of the train that drops out, nobody else is obligated to wait an unreasonable period. But all of Jason Howard's dreams. Other folks have their dreams, too. The gold fields before all the best claims are filed on. The ranches before the good land is taken up. But, Papa, you just can't drive away and leave Sarah Howard. 
Now, don't you start. But you can't. Mr. Kramer, pass the word. Get ready to roll. You go up front and get in the wagon. Not yours, Papa. I won't ride another mile with you. I won't eat another meal with you. And I will do my best not to see you the rest of the way. Mr. Kramer, may I ride with you and Mrs. Kramer? If that's what she wants, I have no objection. If she tries not to see me, I'll make every effort not to see her. And I blame you for most of this, Pancoast. She never turned away from me before, never once until you came along. Get ready to roll. When I do, it'll be in the other direction. Back to the Howards. I'll be glad to see the last of you. And the sooner Annette forgets you, the better. father's gonna skin you alive. Not if Mr. Kramer keeps his promise not to tell him. Until after it's too late for him to come after me. So you talk Glenn Kramer into this. Didn't he stop to consider there'd be talk? Now, just a minute, Charlie Pancoast. If anybody thinks I did this just to be with you. The simple truth is, the time's coming when Sarah Howard will need a woman with her to see her through. But you're only a girl. Glad you finally noticed. Now, shall we go help the Howards? Well, that does it, Jason. Would you quit being so mysterious and tell me what the scheme is? Haven't you figured it out? Okay, Sarah. You can start cutting more cloth now. Yes, Jason. You're not going to cut that up, are you, Mrs. Howard? It looks like a wedding gown. It is. Mine. Now, you see? When I get these on all four wheels, I'll be... Plenty of purchase and never get stuck again. Jason. Huh? It won't work. I know. Sarah, hold up a minute. What you need is, is more surface on the wheel. Something on the order of cleats or... Cleats, that's it. Look, you got this barrel here. We, we can cut the staves off. Absolutely not. That barrel's full of caulking compound. Uh, the Defiant's gonna need it when we get it to the river. All right, we'll use my barrel. It's, it's uh, only got dishes packed in it. We'll uh, cut the staves into lengths about the size of this diary. Yeah? And we'll bolt them on the wheel like this. If we space them close enough together, that'll keep the wheels from sinking. That sounds good, but uh, here's what'll happen. First rock that the wheel hits gonna knock those cleats right off or uh, break them in half. Charlie, do you really need your wagon? If you hitched your team to Jason's, couldn't four horses pull the Defiant? We could carry your things. No, we'd still be too heavy, even with a double team. Well, couldn't we use double wheels? What did you say? Why, take the wheels off of your wagon and bolt them to Jason's. Sort of pair them up. Nettie? Double wheels. 
Gratefully accepted. You know, I've been thinking. Thinking what? How strange it is. Where ideas come from. What do you mean? Well, thinking about these double wheels. <laughs> Both Jason and I are supposed to know something about mechanical things. We couldn't come up with anything that made any sense at all. Then, all of a sudden, out of the blue, you come up with perfect solution. Are you trying to tell me that women aren't supposed to be able to think? Uh, no, I, not at all. I, uh, what I mean is, well, I, I guess what I'm really trying to say is that I'm very proud that you're so smart and so pretty, too. Well, thank you, Charlie. But it won't mean much unless my idea works. It's going to work all right. We'll be on our way soon. Not any too soon for Sarah. She's just not well. Jason's with her now. Yeah. Once we get rolling, we'll make pretty good time. Maybe we'll be out of the desert before the baby comes. I'm worried about her, Charlie. She's just not strong enough for this. And neither am I. I hope I'm up to it. That I'll be able to help her. When the time comes, you can do it. It all seemed so simple before. I thought you could help Jason with the Defiant, and I could take care of Sarah, and we'd all go sailing off across the desert. But it hasn't worked out that way. Sometimes I'm so afraid we're all going to die out here in this, this space. The desert's a hard and lonely place. People need each other in order to just keep going. We should have convinced Jason to leave his wagon and stay with the others. Maybe my father was right. No, he, he wasn't right. But he did what he had to do, and so did we. Nothing in the world will ever make Jason and Sarah give up the Defiant. It's all they have. Well, they have each other. But what do we have? are working. We made 10 miles today. The first three days were pleasant, but it's getting hot. one of our horses. As a result, we only made six miles, and I'm afraid it will be less tomorrow. I am deeply concerned about Sarah Howard. She is showing the effects of the journey, especially the fact that we are low on water. Are you sure you're all right, Mrs. Howard? Oh, now, don't worry about me, child. I come from a hardy stock. Why, my mother plowed a full acre the day before she bore me. All I want is we just keep moving. We are 
now down to two horses, and the going gets worse by the day. To add to our troubles, the heat has become almost unendurable. And I very much fear that Sarah Howard is coming close to her time. something, Nettie? What? I wish there was one other person here with us at this moment, so we could see the look on his face when he realizes we've brought the defiant through after all. Your father. giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Joe Ferguson was not a religious man, but he was a good man, a good friend, a good companion on the trail. He was the kind of man that would always volunteer for a job that required courage. With his wife, Ida, he left his home in Missouri to seek his fortune in California. And then last night, we were camped on the very banks of the Gila River when we thought that all of our troubles were past us. Tragedy struck. Joe Ferguson gave his life trying to save our horses. His death is all the more bitter because he failed. Amen. 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 Now, we may fail too, Kramer, but we've got to get horses. We can't just sit here and let the train starve to death. But it's a hundred miles to Fort Yuma and just about as far back to the Pima Village. Well, talking about it's not going to make it any shorter. Now, there's nobody else in the train up to making a walk. Which way you want to go, east or west? Maybe I'll just float to Fort Yuma. Buy me enough horses to bring back. Kramer, are you out of your head? There's, there's not enough wood around here to make a toothpick, let alone a raft. And another thing while we're about it. I've had to put up with you because there wasn't very much I could do about it. I'm not forgetting you're the one that helped Annette. Life will be years before I see her again. Might be sooner if you just uh, turn around. Jason Howard got the Defiant to California by way of the Gila River to the Colorado, thanks to Charlie Pancoast's help. Pancoast left an account of the journey in a diary which he faithfully kept, a diary to which we're indebted for tonight's show. We're also told that the first white child born in southern Arizona was the Howard baby who first saw the light of day on that same Gila River. I'm very sure nobody could blame the proud parents for naming the infant Gila Howard. Next week, another true story of our American West. <laughs>